Hi, I'm Ron Vanderlinden. What you're going to see in this DVD are the drills and the techniques and the points of emphasis I use in coaching the Penn State linebackers in pass defense. The first uh, segment is an agility drill I use that I think has a lot of carryover in the defending the pass and I just label it as you could see flipping the hips and the players are going to open with the quarterback's shoulders, they're going to uh, move their hips, they're going to ease out, they're, they're not exploding out. Uh, my point of emphasis is get as deep as you have to but no deeper than you have to for quarterback scrambles, for check downs coming up. So I want to ease out and I found that that uh, works well where a linebacker uh, whose pre-snap alignment is at four to five yards can ease out, he can uh, take a blink at the receivers in his area and get as deep as he needs to but not deeper than he has to. I start out spot dropping and uh, this first drop back they're using cover three drops, three deep um, drops where the linebackers you're looking at are hooked to curl, the boundary linebacker is a flat defender, um, I'm easing out reading the quarterback's head and eyes, settling when the quarterback settles and then breaking on the ball. You'll see the boundary linebacker in a cover three go flat initially and the reason he does that is to stop a three-step drop if he go if he drops at an angle to the numbers he's going to be over the top of any kind of a three-step here you're going to get a good illustration of the three-step he should on that first one if you run it back read the split the split of the receiver was outside the numbers indicating that you're going to get a slant route uh, that was a uh, kind of a tough one to read because he was outside the numbers and he just ran a hitch uh, and then he's inside the numbers, he's going to run it out, and you can see I can easily uh, get to that three-step. If it turns out to be a five-step drop, then once I have gone flat uh, approximately to the numbers and read that it's a five-step, then I am going to just ease backwards and play the route, uh, getting a pre-snap read from the split uh, that the wide receiver runs, being at breaking in or breaking out. These are examples of linebackers just dropping in a three-step drop, easing back, and then breaking on the football. You got a good look at our boundary backer going flat initially, and then number 18, number 43, easing back, opening up, ease, 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 and then reading the quarterback and breaking in on the football. Even though this is a play action pass and a uh, which will come up later in drills, it's included because the linebackers kind of played it as a drop back, read the quarterback, and broke on the football, which really is what they should do. The middle linebacker who broke on that ball and intercepted it read it as a flood route when it went to trips. And, and quickly read the quarterback's intention to the field, went to the field, broke on the ball, and made a nice play. Same thing with the middle linebacker there. He opened to the field, read the Q, QB's eyes and shoulders, and was able to break on the football. And, and we get into that discussion, do you spot drop or do you route read? I think you start spot, spot dropping. Uh, seeing the quarterback, reading his eyes and shoulder give you such a, a tremendous advantage and breaking on the football, which leads to interceptions. However, there is a, a point where you do need to read routes, uh, and, and how detailed you get in that uh, depends on your players and, and the team you're playing. Uh, in this particular situation, number 40 is getting a flat curl, which again will come up later on this DVD, uh, but he's easing back, he's reading that quarterback, and just does a nice job breaking on the football, and kind of overran it, and uh, certainly wish he had caught it. Empty, no back set, linebackers easing back, and then breaking up uh, as they read the quarterback's intent to drop it off on a check down. Again, very similar to the flip the hips drill where they're easing back and then breaking up. Reading the receiver in the area and the intent of the quarterback.
43, easing back, breaking on the throw. Seeing the ball thrown is critically important. Getting your eyes back to the quarterback as soon as you read the intent of the, of the route. Nice job in the boundary with the boundary backer going flat and taking away the three-step. Now play action. I'm reading run first, and the linebacker should play run, 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 run. As they read, it's a play action. Now they don't have the luxury of easing back. Now they need to turn, drive for depth, locate the receiver in the deepest part of their zone, and break on the football. The boundary backer is like a strong safety. He should not be reacting up quickly on the run at, uh, either way. He should sit. All of a sudden, excuse all these phones ringing here. <laughs> Play action. Run, 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 run. Turn, find the receiver in the deepest part of your zone and, and defend him. And, and they really should be two to three yards inside, two to three yards underneath so as to not overrun the ball. These are some illustrations on play action pass, play and run. You can see 43 bit up, and, and then he located the deepest receiver in his area and did a pretty good job of, of driving for depth and getting his hand on the football. Very similar to the drill. He opened, he read the route, did a nice job getting depth and, and working for depth. Now here, number 45 is definitely sucked up, and they're trying to hit that void right behind him with the tight end. And he does a nice job. He sucked up on the run, turning and driving, and in and, and doing so, the football hit him in the helmet, um, thus defending the play. Now, defending the bootleg uh, really have done this one of two ways. One where the backside linebacker turns into the contained player and the frontside linebacker on the side of the crosser picks up the crosser and runs with it. You'd like the boundary backer, if the boot is into the boundary, to kind of high-low the outcut from the number one receiver and the linebacker or the uh, receiver running to the flat. Now, this pass group uh, didn't uh, pick up that whole concept so much as the backside guy uh, comes around and contain the frontside guy runs with the crosser. Uh, so I just said, hey, the middle backer is always secondary contain, and then the other linebacker always has the crosser. Now. When the crosser is on the side of the play fake, it's challenging for that uh, linebacker to do it. Uh, however, he should get help from uh, the secondary hollering out pass when they see receivers released from the line of scrimmage. And uh, that certainly adds uh, or helps him in, in terms of playing that crosser. But I, I didn't feel like I could uh, leave it up to their judgment to read their way through it because then neither did either. Uh, so I just predetermined one guy always had contain, one guy always had the crosser. Now the hook route is probably the most common route um, thrown in football. And so, uh, you know, years ago we used to work on collisioning that tight end. And what I found was I lost most of those battles. That big, strong tight end would drive into my leverage and push off and gain separation. And, and if he was any good at all, that was a, a pretty constant throw and catch by the offset, offense. Uh, a former NFL tight end who played a number of years, Mickey Schuler, uh, grabbed me one time and, and talked about the concept in which he thought was most challenging uh, that working against him by NFL linebackers was for the linebacker just to ease underneath the leverage of the tight end, not colliding with him, maintaining inside-out position. And in doing so, it was really challenging for that tight end 
to know whether to break in or out, to know the leverage of the linebacker. And that linebacker or that tight end uh, constantly worked on driving in and pushing off. He wanted contact by that linebacker. And so for the last several years, that is a technique that I've, I've worked there, and you can see 31. Now, I, I'd like him not to back up initially, that he should sit and, and absorb that hook threat um, and then break on it. And that allows me not to um, give up separation uh, from the tight end. That was a game illustration, and here we come back into the practice illustrations. You can see number 11 there. Uh, walling out, feeling the tight end. I want to feel him. I want to put my outside leg in the crotch of the receiver. And, and there again, 43, um, staying inside and underneath the tight end. Here you should see some more illustrations of that. Uh, I think the first one, we're defending the hook route of the number two receiver into the boundary. Now with a, a wide receiver or a skinny butt, as I refer to him, uh, you can be a little more physical with him. But I think, uh, as with most guys, uh, my guys, because I work the technique of easing underneath, they, they pretty much adapt to that. And then you have to be careful if you're overly aggressive that wide receiver can get inside you as well. Nice job by the linebacker. Another one I wish we had caught. But a nice job by 43, easing. Um, putting the outside leg in the crotch of the tight end. And, and he wanted to uh, collision him, and I'm glad he didn't because that allowed him um, to break under the ball and, and not get pushed in allowing that tight end to get separation. Now this number three receiver here is a tight end for Notre Dame, and again, I wish we hadn't backed up. But at the same time, because we didn't collision the tight end and he couldn't push off, uh, the linebacker was able to break underneath and, and break up the pass. Watching 40 working against... Uh, no, I'm sorry. It was 45. Flat curl combination. Probably the most frequent route combination used in football. And as I go back through each year and look at the cutups, I find that uh, this ordinary route combination is effective against us unless I really work the heck out of it to take it away. When number two goes flat, which is going to happen fairly rapidly in order to pull the flat defender out of that curl window, that linebacker now has to recognize that he has to hustle to get to the curl. Now, he doesn't want to go right on top of the curl. As you can see, that wide receiver would work inside of him. And, and there would be a window open if I went right on side. So again, I want to go two to three yards inside of the curl route, two to three yards underneath. If I were to go right on top of that wide receiver, he'll move inside of me uh, and, and get into that open window, or he'll come back to the ball in front of me. So two to three yards inside, two to three yards underneath. And you can see 34 almost overran that wide receiver. As I do this drill occasionally, I tell that tight end, continue to run a hook because I'm reading two to one. Two goes flat. I work to one. You can see uh, that linebacker there was a good four yards inside of the wide receiver and yet easily could break to that window to the curl. Same thing right there, illustrating how far I can go um, once I uh, see that ball and, and break on it. And, and very careful not to go right on top of that wide receiver, which would cause me to overrun him. I almost overran him there. You could see 15, I think, was in real danger if that wide receiver kept moving inside to go right on by him, right on by the wide receiver as the wide receiver got inside. And here again, you got to occasionally have that uh, hook. Uh, receiver run that hook to keep the linebacker honest and reading two to one in his route read progression.
looking into the boundary, flat curl combination. I believe we saw this earlier on 40 breaking on the ball. I do think 40 sees the running back go flat. Maybe not, uh, but he does get into that curl window. This is a flat curl combination into the boundary where number 40 is the flat defender. A little play action. He's expanding, but he realizes that there's a curl behind him, and he baited the quarterback into throwing the curl and came back inside and stole the curl. 31 needed to get wider uh, after the play action fake and, and get out and defend that curl. You can clearly see that number two went flat and he got caught up in the play action. Fortunately, 40 made a great play. This is a drill, look search, that I use frequently during the season. The uh, linebacker who in, in this drill here indoors, you're going to see, doesn't always line up on the line. He should line up right on the line of scrimmage. And then as the quarterback drops back, he should ease back. He should blink and take a look at the receiver and get his head back. No deeper than four to five yards should he uh, get without really getting back and seeing the quarterback. It's a, it's a drill designed to blink, to look and search and, and blink and, and read the intent of the route, read the intent of the receiver, and then get his head back to the quarterback so he can break on the ball. I want him to go to that receiver and defend the route. And it's a good drill, I think, in creating awareness uh, quickly without having my head turned uh, forever and, and losing sight on the football and the ability to break on the ball where I want to blink the intent of the route but get my eyes back to the quarterback and make a play on the football. I have found since doing this drill the last three to four years that there are a lot of these illustrations in games where uh, doing this over and over and over again uh, through a course of time that the linebackers get better at blinking and seeing uh, what's, what's out behind them but not uh, losing their focus on the quarterback and their ability to break on the football. Nice job by 43, realizing the receiver gets in behind him, reads the intent of the quarterback's shoulders. He's look search, you see him blink, and then you see that receiver break behind him, and he's able to break on the ball and get a hand on the football. Here you're going to watch number 40. And he opens, he blinks the receiver, he sees the receiver breaking inside of him, breaks with him just like the drill we just saw, and runs with him and intercepts the football. 